Yeah, it is recording. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This video is actually very special because this is my first ever video here in YouTube. Yes, like no subscribers at all. So expect a lot of awkwardness, a lot of long pauses and probably weird stutters because for sure you're gonna get a whole lot of them. Like a lot. Like this one. <laughs> I've actually been thinking about this for ages now and finally I came to terms with myself to finally do it but you know what it wouldn't be possible without that final push that I needed from my friends so if you're here you're probably one of those friends or probably you're here because of the title of this video which is mad and it's so exciting but whatever your reason is thanks a lot for being here and I hope that you stick with me until the end of this video like I said earlier, this is my first ever video here on YouTube, so I just think that I need to tell you guys what types of contents to expect from this channel, hoping that they are interesting enough for you guys to hit that subscribe button. Now, I am not sure where it's gonna appear, so it could be here or here, but yeah, the thing is just, you know, subscribe. I actually can't think of any better way of doing it but to give you guys a brief introduction of myself. Alexa, what's the weather like today? Right now in Chile, it's 39 degrees Fahrenheit with cloudy skies. Tonight's forecast has showers with a low of 38 degrees. So my name is Jennifer and I am originally from the beautiful country of the Philippines and now I am leaving 7,000 miles away from home here in Ireland. So I hope that I nail this animation, otherwise I will just look silly. I've been living here in Ireland for a little over two years now and that makes it a total of around seven years working abroad. So from there, you probably already have an idea of what I'm gonna talk about in this channel. But just to be clear, right, I want to use this platform to share my experiences living abroad, just living alone, away from your family and friends. Probably share with you guys a couple or more of my travels around here. And um, yeah, probably share just random experiences and thoughts that I would think would be relatable to other people. Um, what was I saying? So guys, enough of the introductions. Let's just do the business. Oh, can you hear that? I actually live very close to the church, so whenever the bell rings, you can really hear it. Yeah, it's still on. I'm actually not sure if you can hear it, but anyway. I'll just wait. Oh, it's gone! <laughs> okay. Out of the many things that I want to share with you guys, today I picked a topic that has always been the number one question to me by someone I met here in Europe or even the people back home, and that is how I made it to Europe. If you are someone like me who's from a country who has no free movement of persons agreement with literally no one in the world, you probably already know how difficult it is to move abroad. Aside from the fact that it takes a lot of guts for someone to finally decide to leave their comfort zones, which is their home country, and then move to another country to work, I believe that there are three main things that make it difficult to move abroad. First in the list is the immigration requirement. Yes, we can travel to some countries with just our passport, but that's only for tourism purposes. If you want to work abroad legally, then you need to undergo a long immigration process and produce a lot of immigration requirements. And you see, that takes a lot of resources, like time and money. The second thing is the additional layer of competition to get that job. You need to give your future employer a really good reason for them to pick you 
who is on the other side of the world over someone who's just around the corner. And the harsh truth is that you need a massive amount of experience related to the job you're applying for to secure a spot. That brings us to the last point, which is the language barrier. See, here in Europe, it's only the UK and Ireland who are English-speaking countries. Ang hirap. <laughs> See, here in Europe, it's only the UK and Ireland who are English-speaking countries. The rest of the other countries have their own um, languages that you would actually need to learn first before they even consider you as a candidate. Sounds a lot, right? So I want to give you guys some tips on how to um, find a job and actually get that job. Before I move on, I just want to remind you guys that I am not an expert. I am not an HR person of some sort. I am just literally sharing with you guys how I did it for myself. And I actually want to believe that since I got here, then there must be something good that I did. Well, hopefully. Anyway, let's go. So just a bit of a short story, right? When I decided to leave my previous company, I started looking for the jobs right away. And yes, you heard that right. I know it's scary. I just know myself that I needed that jump so I can move forward. And that's not probably one of the wisest decisions that I've made in my life, along with a lot, lot more, like a lot. But I'm just grateful for how things worked out. So first tip revamp your CV. The expression first impression lasts doesn't just always apply to your first date or the first time you're meeting the parents. It is also very true in the workplace. Your CV is the first ever chance to showcase yourself and impress your future employers. I did a lot of research on this in the past and two ingredients of a great CV content and the overall feel of it. Yeah, no one's gonna argue about it guys, content is your key, but you need to make sure that the content of your CV is concise and easily readable. Otherwise, no one's gonna bother in reading it. Okay, so one by one, basic information, name, address, contact numbers. Name, obvious, address. If you're from the Philippines, your address is probably block 8, lot 2, building 3, phase 2, etc. blah blah blah. You don't need to write all of that in your CV. The zip code and the country will be enough. Now, your contact numbers, don't ever make a mistake on this one because you want to be as easily contactable as possible. So now we move on to the next section of your CV, which is your education background and your employment history. If you got really good grades back in school, then definitely put it in there. Otherwise, you can leave it out. But you see, I'm not saying not to put it in there. Of course you can, but leaving it out will leave more space and also more emphasis to your employment history. And I'm gonna tell you why, and this is very important. Don't just describe your previous role. You need to boast the goals that you have achieved in that role. For example, you are a sales representative. Instead of just saying, I am pitching for new clients twice a month and making sure that our current existing customers get the products that they ordered. You should say, brought X number of new customers to the company, increasing the revenue by X percentage. That way, they will have an idea of what you can actually deliver for them based on actual fact. The last tip that I have is about your references. Before you submit that CV, you need to make sure that you have your references ready. Talk to the people who have witnessed your prowess at work and would definitely 100% give you a positive feedback because writing available upon request doesn't give any value to your CV at all. So you're probably better off just leaving it out. So I save a copy of the template of my CV and I will drop the link in the comment box below just in case you are in the process of updating your CV. And again, I just want to remind you guys that I am not an expert. I am just literally sharing with you how I did it. And also remember that CVs are not one size fits all. So use it at your own risk. Now we move on to tip number two, which is filter your options. There are actually thousands and thousands of opportunities out there to the point that you can easily get lost on the way. And it is understandable. Most people will tend to just submit applications whenever anything pops up that is related to their profession. And that is normal because 
options 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 you know having a lot of options is always the best way to go and i'm not gonna lie that is exactly what i did three years ago but then learn from my mistakes i can't even remember how many applications i submitted linkedin jobs db irish jobs at ie whatever there's a lot and I realized not only I wasted my time submitting all those applications, but the major impact was that I doubted myself. I was not sure if I'm going to get another job because I am not getting a positive feedback. You're definitely going to get a lot of feedbacks, just not positive, and it will hurt your self-esteem and you don't want that. What I actually recommend is for you to carefully select the job that you will be applying to. So how are you going to do that? I suggest that you ask yourself this. Do you actually want to go to a new industry or a completely different one? Do you want your new role to be the same as your previous role or is it a step up? Do you want to work for a local company or an international company? You might also want to research if having an agency will increase your chances of winning, you know, like all those stuff. And then the less important questions would be, do you want a place where there's four seasons or just the two seasons like what we have in the Philippines? summer and rain are you going to be going alone or with your friends now where are you actually going to find these opportunities there are a lot of sources and the internet is your friend there is jobs that ie linkedin monster indeed and definitely there would be local job search engines if you've already selected your country you can also research which countries are highly open to migrant workers which countries are best to live in i am 100 percent sure that with those questions in mind you'll already be able to narrow down your or places to look for. Now, if you're listening carefully, I said that the internet is your friend, and that is because your best friend is your friend. If you have a friend who's satisfied with his or her work, you're hearing a lot of good stuff about the company, never hesitate to ask for recommendations. It is a win-win situation for the both of you. Companies believe that great people know great people, so you might actually have higher chances of being hired just by being referred by one of their good employees. And then normally companies incentivize their employees who bring great talent in cash. So like I said, it's a win-win situation for the both of you. So why not? So now that you have filtered your options, you have lesser jobs to apply for. That will mean more time for the application process itself. So what you should do and listen to this, because this is very important. Read the description of the job role that you're applying for and tailor your CV based on that. And cut. Brought you a cocktail. Pink with orange. Is it really good? I like it. I've been drinking it. Oh my god, yeah. Thank I'm, you so much. I'm work? almost done. Yeah? Oui. Okay, cool. Now we're on to the third and last tip, and this is related to your interview. This is probably the best hack ever, so take note of this. So the HR person who contacted you will definitely let you know who your interviewers will be. And if not, Feel free to ask. Now that you have the names, do your research about these people. I know it sounds creepy, but that is the way to go and that is how they're gonna remember you. Take the time to have an idea of what they do in the job and also their working experience. That way, you can prepare a question or two to ask them and they would definitely know that you've done your research and that you have the full interest for their company. So that's it guys. I hope you learned something from today's video. I plan to post every week, so hopefully I'll see you next week. If you have any questions, just write them in the comment box below and I will definitely try my best to respond to them. Again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss anything. Ciao!